you know, one of the things, you know, when they pan to the producers? Yeah. And you know how this area is just kind of blank and dull? Do you mm-hmm. think we should, like, maybe add some trinkets or something? Just yeah, to me, me and Corey have talked about that. We just never move forward with it. But oh, no. short answer is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. been conversations. You got a bunch yeah. of toys that you want to bring to put up there? <laughs> no, like, just like, any, I don't know. Little friend. Something that would dude, kinda... where's the gremlin, dude? Yeah, for the Where's Steve Smith, dude? You got to bring that back. My mother-in-law said that was her favorite episode. <laughs> 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 oh, God, Never would have expected that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I should put yeah, him right my, there. My he should be the mascot. Just, just right on the side. Right there. Popping out of yeah, the... that's a good idea. She's anti-feminist. Popping out of the drawer. Just like, hi. I just put all the props we bring over the course. Just leave it over there. Leave it. Like my mother-in-law has a big family, so she's known as, like, the most serious of all. Like, she has, like, 11 siblings, or she's one of 11. Oh, wow. Oh, so she's known in the whole family as, like, the serious one. So having something as stupid as <laughs> yeah. Caleb <laughs> holding a puppet, you just wouldn't think that that would have uh, that tickled so her, funny. you know? That's yeah, funny. I know. <laughs> you know what's so crazy? That you just said 11, like, 11 siblings, 10 yeah, siblings. Yeah, 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 yeah. My aunt's one of nine. She has nine big brothers or nine brothers. What is the anybody your age or around your age that has the most kids? Do you guys know anybody who has more than four kids? Like yeah, it's Steve, it's Steve Ross, Ross. <laughs> my boy from college. He's older than me, mm. but oh, I mean, yeah, he's, I remember him. Yeah, Steve Ross is probably. I think, I think they're on. Uh, eight Steve, if you're listening, nine. is tell me how what, well, how old you are. <laughs> he's probably eight years older than me or something like yeah. that. But he's under I think 40. He has uh, yeah, yeah. He's probably oh, yeah. either f- right at forty he's or right under, and um, I think he has. Eight or nine. Yeah, eight, eight or nine. Or nine. Like oh. eight or nine. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. what does he do? And they're all in different age brackets. Well, he was our, our resident director at uh, university when I was there, which, you know, RDs right. ain't getting paid a lot, but you are yeah. getting housing. And yeah. so his him had eight kids. I think it was a three bedroom apartment, oh two bedroom goodness, apartment. Dude. So what do you guys no. think it is? My dad is one of twelve. Oh. So and back in the day, I feel like a lot of people had a lot more kids. But now you rarely hear it's like, oh, I'm one and done, All or right. two and I'm good. Yeah. So what mm-hmm. do you guys think it is about that people aren't having? Is it the money? Is it the culture? Well, they say the more money, the more money you have, the less kids people tend to produce. Mm-hmm. Where the poor populations. They produce more kids for some reason. It's interesting. Like when you go into third world, that's why India is like, and yeah. China are the most populated place in the planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I think the main reason in America on why it stopped is because uh, generally you have uh, two income households now. So mm. in order to survive and live, you need two incomes. And then, you know, if you go to like Mormon uh, states like Utah, where um, the community economics work differently, and so you do have a, a louder majority of stay-at-home moms built into the culture and the framework. You still have, like over in Utah, you still have families with uh, seven kids, eight kids, nine kids, even even our age of yeah. individuals doing that, because uh, most of the time it comes with uh, with the stay-at-home mom. If and me and Ashley have talked about that, we were like, listen, if you were fully a stay-at-home mom. I mean, we would we would just crank them out because we <laughs> we love having kids and we love our kids, you know. Yeah. And um, I tell Ashley all the time, like I I wish I had eight or nine it's a clan, but I also yeah. wish I didn't have to do the infancy thing over. And over oh again. My. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, that's what made us stop yeah, at three because yeah. that's what was just like you know it was because I wanted like seven. And that was oh, my wow. uh, that's what I wanted. Mm. But she she didn't want to be a stay at home mom. She wanted a, you know, a, a career. She wanted a job. Yeah. And then it got to the point by the third one, the back to back every two years, it just became too much. And we're just like, this isn't like really what the lifestyle that we necessarily want. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I fully believe, you know, scripture children are like arrows. You know, it's like having your your quiver full is is a blessing and if you can have children and as many children as possible and you can make it financially shake by all means please do it it'd be that would be my heart but for me i i love that ashley does ministry with me i love that uh she's a part of uh, uh church with me and if there was ever an ounce where where you know we had talked is like do you want to be a stay at home mom she's like my she's like actually i I would. I love this, but I feel like the Lord has called me into full-time ministry, so therefore I'm going to be obedient to the Lord um, in that sense, which we automatically decided. And I travel a lot for ministry. I, you know, I speak right. a lot of places, mm-hmm. and we like to bring our boys with that. Like we didn't, we didn't. We, her and I talked early on. Like 
we don't want to build them up in a household where, where dad's always gone. Mm -hmm. um, so, so a lot of times, maybe half the time when I do travel and preach, I'm bringing them with me. And so the more kids you add to that, that's one extra plane ticket. That's one extra, you know, bigger vehicle you have right, to rent. It, right. it just, mm -hmm. it just, just adds, transit, right? yeah. you know. So basically I'd be speaking and whatever I get paid is just to pay for my kids travel right. you know, at that point. Right. So, yeah. so right. we were like, no, we're stopped at two. We're stopping at two. Um, wow, um, unless, unless the Lord does a miracle, <laughs> well, there will be miracles. <laughs> <laughs> when you... Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I mean, that's I why, that that, that, yeah, that, that's why they, <laughs> that, that, just think it. Don't say it, because that's yeah, the yeah. magic in you. That's why they're saying. I think Elon Musk says has been saying that the problem isn't um, overpopulation. The problem is underpopulation. A lot of the first world Western countries they're uh, they're underpopulated, and that's one of the theories behind why both the left and the right want so many Im illegal immigrants pouring in, because otherwise um, there would be literally be no workers to uh, produce and to uh, build the infrastructure, the, the housing and the, the streets and everything that's being done, like, infrastructure-wise, you know, it, it's because we're underpopulated as a country. Or you fall into a circumstance like France, which has led a lot of, uh, over the years, a lot Islamic uh, immigrants, and now, uh, pretty soon in the next couple decades... Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Muslims will outweigh Parisians four to one mm. in yep. the next couple of decades. And Get so, ready. Oh. so they will actually start changing the laws uh, yeah. in Paris yeah. and, and, and wherever they go, because in, in Islam, you still uh, procreate like crazy. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So, no, you know, because no contraceptions are used at all or allowed or anything at all. So they're just having kids. And in a lot of these European countries who have opened their border towards uh, Islamic states, uh, it will it will be the majority in their populations very and because of what Caleb's point is they're having le uh, left the the you know Western world is having less kids abortion is way more popular all these outs the pill abortion everything so yeah. so you're looking at all the traditional I don't know if you, I don't know if you know that comedian I forgot what comedian it was he was like I don't know why Christian conservatives aren't for abortion because all those that are being aborted are liberals. The, 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 you know, in the, he's like, he's like, in the next Dang. fifty years, the only ones that will exist will be Christians. Wow, so he's yeah. like, why aren't they? Uh, why Dang. aren't they a fan of that yeah, process that's... of elimination? And I'm like, oh, well, they, you know, obviously we're not for it for uh, convicted reasons, but other than that, like, uh, I wonder well, what will the a, next fifty there's years a, look there's like. There's a book you know? called "The Religious Will Inherit the Earth," and that's the thing, like, because atheists and liberals they don't produce. Mm -hmm. they, they live, for the most part, hedonistic, self-centered mm -hmm. lives because they don't believe in an afterlife. And so there, the, this book that is The Religious Will Inherit the Earth. So, you know, the, the, because the religious are the ones who believe in an afterlife. The religious are the ones who believe in service of others and, and, and focusing on others in your community and everything like that. And so they're the ones that produce. They're the ones that have kids. So like Adam said, in, the, in Europe, it's going to be... It's going to be uh, Muslims uh, in America. It's going to be Hispanics mainly. Mm. Um, this, my kids are the first generation where, uh, as as white, they are now the minority in their generation. They're now the minority in as Your kids far are as Korean whites. too. Well, they're white. They're white, <laughs> but but they're white, Played Korean, the and Hispanic. Yeah. So so they're three. They're three quarters, quote unquote. They but they look white. That's what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm not right. saying that's a bad thing. I know what I'm you're just saying, saying that it's mm. it, it just shows how how our society is changing yeah. and the culture is yeah. changing. And um, you know, Eric P. Kaufman. That's who you're talking about. Shall the religious inherit the is earth? Is he a religious um, guy or is got, he a sociologist? He's got some good uh, Amazon reviews. He's a on sociologist. Him. Who oh, determines wow. the yeah. number of what's considered underpopulated and what's overpopulation? Opinion. Opinion. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. Just, like, oh, just all right. No. Yeah. yeah. There's a yeah. little yeah. political yeah. agenda. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little yeah. number yeah. on the earth, and it says maximum occupancy of this earth. Oh, it's <laughs> like when you're driving yeah. into cities, it's like the maximum. Right. Right. Okay. That's population. That makes sense. But it says brilliant. The forward is brilliant and provocative. A book. Every liberal should read. Oh, really? <laughs> Dude. Well, I seen a, a okay. similar statistic. It's hundred and fifty dollars on Amazon. Oh, that is means it? someone's doing a resale. It's discontinued. Oh. Yeah, no, it's, it's an educational book or That's something. What that means. Ouch. Uh, Eric Coppin oh, yeah. is a professor of politics at Birkbeck College, University of London. He's author of uh, 
white shift immigration which caleb talked about uh which is changing changing white culture uh populism future of white majorities oh so he's doing a lot of yeah political it's statistics based but to answer your question it's, it's data and statistics yeah thank you, thank you. well they that's it that, that's why stuff. you know that, well okay so this is a great intro to the video because that oh, you I have a video about i got the i got this video oh, wow. of walt disney you set it up and, and kind of his visionary aspect but what i wanted when i mm -hmm. wanted to say now and connect it with that since we're talking about this um is it's fascinating how it used to be America that we're the, on the frontier of vis being visionaries and yep. creation and infrastructure. But now you're seeing it in China. You're seeing it in Saudi Arabia. I think, you know, uh, Dubai. Dubai, they're trying to have this uh, one trillion Islamist, dollar uh, Islamic utopia where mm. it's like this huge, I mean, I'm next buy level. An apartment. But it's like you've seen that. No, yeah, the, mirror, that. the mirror community. Yeah. You could yeah. buy an apartment, though. Bro, it's it's like gonna Time cost one trillion dollars. They just started breaking ground. It's a big wall, right? Yeah, it's the oh, glass yeah, wall, the and then inside it's gonna reflect the sun, and inside Ugh. of it, it's all these utopian. Yeah. And people thought it was like one of these bogus concept things, and then they broke ground like two months ago. <laughs> well, the, well, yeah, oh, that, actually, wow. like, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, I I I think wow. the the future is the east. I mean, everything is now. Um, coming from the east, China is now gaining more control over all aspects of the world, Africa, America, and so I'm. And like I said, I'm not saying this is bad or good. I'm just like observing objectively what's going on. It's just fascinating how America is no longer our our roads are jacked up, listen, potholes. Listen. We're not developing anything. As long but as we have east, Elon Musk, yes. <laughs> as long as we have Elon yes. Musk, electric. Come on, electric we were cars. just talking about no. Zoom. I mean, satellite electric, internet. Oh, okay, come on, dude. Sat, that, no, that, nobody. That God, your satellite follows your. No, there, there's no such thing as satellite. The thing <laughs> is, is that <laughs> electric cars ain't that great. Okay, I, I mean, I have I'll electric cars. It's pretty no, 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 but it's, it's, not, it's not world changing. It's not life changing. Yes, it's it not is, society dude. changing. Got fully charged. Yeah, you know like what? It's hour. yet to be Bro, determined. You live, you're like Patrick. You live under a rock. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's always, yet to be determined. No, I've also, I've always, okay, what average person as life is being changed by a Tesla electric car current day? Maybe in 50 years. Maybe in a hundred years, I'm just talking about right now. Um, right now, all I'm saying Listen, is it's, I can't it's fascinating when I'm in LA. No, we just can't breathe. I've that, said that before. It's fascinating that know. all of the crazy development and, and okay. new stuff is coming from the I'll east. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, that's all I've I'm saying. This is supposed to be a about Valentine's Day episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, right. I'm just no, I've always oh, disagreed. Yeah. Nancy, stop. <laughs> okay. No, no, hold on. Hold on. Let's yeah, pause your video. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, I'm joking. You decided to speak up and open up this can of worms. <laughs> Hold on, Verlon, Jermaine Baker. Oh Musketeer. my goodness, you guys. We're going to get to Caleb's <laughs> video. Right Let's, go his, Let's go to his video oh, right yeah. now. How, how's the glorified do? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> watch the video. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave you alone, Nancy. It's Valentine's How Day How those NFTs episode. doing? <laughs> <laughs> okay. hey, I never got on NFTs. Oh. He does. He got some. I got all those. The moon. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It, it's going to happen. It was Maybe. Still, blockchain is still going to take off just because it's all talk now. No, it's not all talk. <laughs> just because the boom didn't go the way people expected, that's that's bound to happen. That, hap that happens with everything. So, okay. how long did we'll it take Bitcoin happened. to get where it's at? <laughs> oh god, to 2009. One. From yeah, 2009, it got it there. It got right. there, and it's it got still where? it's still steady. Got it's not at zero. People lost millions of dollars. People made millions of dollars too. We're gonna let the yeah. Elon Musk Let's play the video in Vegas. People make millions too. I'm gonna let I'm all gonna right. let him slide right now. Okay. He doesn't know any better. <laughs> okay. You know, yeah. you know. Yeah. All right. Okay. Hey, no, is it? Bro, hey, well, everybody, <laughs> Apple, Apple hey, everybody, welcome to it. Beyond the Letter uh, <laughs> yeah, podcast. Yeah, who's, who's at the table? Who's at the Did table today? No, 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 no. We because we, we, we started live. talking and it was just recording. Yeah. No, it was live. It was live when yeah. I said we were live that whole time, Gabriel. Yeah. Right. Um, oh. it's tough to tell when I hit record. This whole conversation was live, though. He recorded yeah. it. We got point. at the table. We got Verlon. We got Yo. Jeremiah. Yeah. Um, Caleb. We got Phil running the audio today. Let's go. Gabe, Gabe, our director, and Nancy for all the single ladies today. <laughs> <laughs> Representative. <laughs> the represent. I mean, you wanted a Valentine's Day, you know, shout yeah. out. So. Oh, what? <laughs> no, I did not want a shout out. I was talking about the conversation. Conversation. Uh, let's go to the Disneyland one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's roll it.
Disney promotes this very small town, wholesome, Midwestern version of the country where everybody is moral and upstanding, where the U.S. has the best values in the world. It's a very white view in which there's no class conflict, there's no racial conflict, where girls stay in their place. But it's also this very idealized and, in the end, fake view of America. Disney held up a false mirror. Now, at the foot of Main Street, about where you're sitting, is the plaza. There were a lot of ways in which the Disney vision either ignored major differences in our society or sought to keep marginalized people in their place. And by the time you get to the late 50s, early 60s, the gap is growing wider between Disney's version of America and what's really going on in the country. He was selling a particular image of America back to itself during the Cold War. Whether it's through the Musketeers or Davy Crockett, he's selling a vision of America that is very flattering to the country. We're oh, Davy, you're back! Strong. Oh, huh? Davy. Hi, huh? We liked thinking that we had these wonderful, selfless, altruistic ideals, that we lived in a conflict-free country where nobody was held down. But there are some real problems in believing that. It deludes you into thinking that there aren't problems you have to confront. It deludes you into thinking that you're a better country than you are. Okay, Kate, where are we at with what? With this video. I can't Tell stand me your the thoughts hate. On it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, the, the, the thought that Because you said you had to you picked this video to Yeah, well the know. thought that that the connection to me is um, you know that's the whole point of Disneyland. Right. You know, that's the whole point of Disneyland. It's supposed to be a utopia. So what what do you expect? What what do you who would go to an amusement park? What are you going to have uh, Skid Row Land? Uh, <laughs> that, that reflects real life. Right. So you're going to have Skid Row Land, you know, Ra you're, racial gentrification <laughs> land. You're going to have McDonald's yeah. Land. Yeah. You know, you're going to have. Wow. I mean, you're going to have. I mean, what what are some of the hor horrible parts of our society? Right, right. I mean, you want right. to dis discrimination, and, discrimination, and, and, like, you know, crack racism. On the yeah. yeah. <laughs> crack Land. Right. Drugs Land. Uh, uh, pharmaceutical land. Trippy. I mean, uh, so uh, the, the idea is like, what do you want to go to an amusement park that's dystopian as opposed to utopian? The whole point of amusement parks is an escape. Yeah. Is, is, is to inspire. I never watched to... Simpsons, but Simpsons has a dystopian Disneyland in it, don't Krusty they? Land. It, Krusty, Krusty, Krusty Land. Krusty Land is Krusty Krusty basically World, yeah. that, right? Yeah, it's, it's like everything opposite. It's the opposite of yeah, Disneyland. You, come, you go yeah. there to get drunk. You go there because uh, your wife left you. you, you go, that's where they have... Not that I watched The Simpsons. No, I feel, like, <laughs> you I feel like you should have watched it. <laughs> no, I snuck it one, as a kid. I snuck it. And that makes sense. Uh -oh. yeah. yeah, no, I snuck it as a kid. But you were yeah, a kid that had little secrets. Just a little bit. Little secrets. But yeah, it was the exact opposite of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the oh, whole idea man. is, you know, because it, it's it's coming from this woke uh, ideology, this woke mindset that only sees the negative parts, the bad parts of our society. And, you know, you, you could look at any culture, any society, and there's bad parts. There's bad and good of every society. That's the problem with the left and the woke is they mm -hmm. only they only see the negative. They only see the bad. And so, you know, she's she's criticizing Disneyland for uh, being this uh, white utopian uh, society, and you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Well, that that's the point. It was. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to inspire. It was. It was revolutionary. It was visionary. It was, and then it was linking with the past, with the with the, the tribal Indians, with you know, Davy Crockett. They, well, it was American culture was in American general. Culture, you look at Ronald Reagan movies mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you know and Marlon Brando. That, yeah. I mean, that, that that wasn't just Disney. That was Hollywood. I mean, Western. Hollywood has always yeah. chased, you know, it's the it's the Toy Story 1 theme, right? Mm -hmm. There was an era in, in, in America that was 
uh, Cowboys and Indians, and then and then uh, mm -hmm. after JFK, it went into astronauts in space. That, yeah. I mean that, yeah. and that's that's Futureland with uh, with Walt Disney. It's not just um, a utopian of <clears throat> of the past. Walt Disney had always it been a utopian real. of the future, right? Right. Yeah. And so that's why you had Adventureland, Frontierland, and then now you had the the. What's the uh, what's their future land called? The Ga Galaxy's Edge. No, the whole oh, land. Tomorrowland. Tomorrow tomorrow land. Land. It's what will the world look like tomorrow, and yeah. that had always been the theme. And so it moved into space, and a astronauts and exploration. And so, uh, to me, you know, Disneyland and other stuff has, all, even though they've been a contributor, I mean, yeah. they're, they're reflecting American society as a whole, which is why even today you have their leadership team reflecting society as a whole mm -hmm. in even the morality where it's going, you know? And so the newest movies yeah. are reflecting uh, American culture as a whole, which they're saying in a, in a capitalism endeavor, like, Oh, we could start making money off of, uh, you know, these themes that we're not putting in the movie, whether it be a boy who finds out that he's part of LGBTQ or whatever yeah. it may be, they're just always trying to make them. To me, in America, she wants capitalism she is wants capitalism. Drag, drag queen story hour land. <laughs> That's what yeah. she wants. Well, but they have. I mean, they're headed in that way. To me, yeah. they're just gonna always make the decisions based off of how much money they mm. can squeeze mm. as possible. That's what a lot of these companies will do, and and. I don't think there's a lot of money in it right now. And I think you're going to see them pivot back into traditional family structure at some point. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I think that's what they've always done is they're just reflecting yeah. American culture and they're evaluating what gives, what gets us the most money. Cowboys and Indians. Well, yeah. now yeah, Cowboys and Indians I, don't give you the most money. So you. they've replaced yeah, yeah, those yeah. things. Mm -hmm. Right. And the reason and, why Hollywood was so you know, white back, that's the majority. So, so naturally like you're going to cater your movies and your casting towards the majority of your country because they're naturally just going to relate more with it and sell more tickets. Yeah. So now our our culture is becoming more diverse. So naturally, you're going to have more uh, black people, more more Me Hispanics actors, more this and that. And it's 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 reflecting the culture of our day, yeah. you know, in that sense. Encanto. Yeah, and, and, I, <laughs> and uh, well, yeah. you know, everything. And then they just did away with Splash Mountain. Yeah. And now it's going to be Princess and the Frog. Right. Um, um, uh, which is fine. Uh, you know, if stuff was rooted in racism before, I mean, I, I think it's responsible at times to just be like, Hey, mm -hmm. maybe as society in some, like, uh, yeah, progress isn't always wrong. So right. that's, I think that's a lot right. of times with yeah. Christians, they just, we throw the baby out with the bathwater and just because we've decided, uh, okay, we're canceling Disneyland, it means everything they're doing is wrong. Like, no, if, if I don't know enough, but if the Splash Mountain, uh, Little foxes or whatever they were were singing a song or whatever that was rooted in racism. The get the get the dang things out of there! Yeah. Like yeah, I agree you know, with like that. don't yeah. perpetuate something that has yeah. happened. And then now you're putting Princess of the Frog. Okay, yeah. great. Like you know, swapped out the um, Jungle Cruise. And, and it seems yep. like and it seems like she's trying to um, displace the role of an artist in society. Like, and that's what I you know when you're studying worldviews or looking into it, they always try to credit. Who founded this worldview? What group of people? Was it the educators, the philosophers, the artists? But time and time again, it's always the artists, the visionaries. Like postmodernism yep. was artists, literal painters who came yeah, up with that concept. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, but then you see some some professors <clears throat> be like, no, it was this one philosopher we found right. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. dude, no. And so she's really not, I don't think she's honoring Walt Disney and for his visionary. Well, her structure is, is postmodern in nature because... And that and that's a lot of people today, and and that's what what um, it's big a decade ago, but I think it should always still be talked about. Mm -hmm. Is is um, postmodernism uh, introduced uh, relativism to everything, mm -hmm. which yeah. says everything is relative, even truth. And the reason why they got a, they got away with that or they did that is because they said that everything intrinsically has a story mm -hmm. or it has a bias yeah. to it. Everything, everything. They say even science has a bias and so therefore all truth is relative yeah. because it's based off of the story and the intentions of the one who started it and so therefore everything is relative truth is relative that's right. why they said the bible was relative and there's no mm -hmm. such thing as truth and so they carry that philosophy into everything so you see it exhibiting from her yeah. in her postmodern language which is disneyland has a story 
and here's the story. Yeah, yeah. Women can't, women are, you know, and you hear it in her language, women are, have to fit inside. I, I, you know, most people I know who love Disneyland are women. Mm -hmm. So if... (laughs) Right, got it's em. not a man's play. <laughs> yeah, it's right. not a man's playground. So <laughs> why do women like Disneyland if it was made right. to subjugate them? I, I, that just doesn't sit down make while s- I enjoy this ride. <laughs> 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 Watch my kids as I. Yeah. Yeah, like, 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 I'm letting. I so, but it's yeah. this idea of well, because Walt Disney's a man, that means that it was intrinsically mm. misogynist. That's his story. The postmodernist always intrinsically looks at goes what's the story and what's the negative of that person and then therefore it means everything that they're doing is riddled yeah, with that rid- and they can't rid- build rid- they only yeah. destroy mm. they, they can't build it's like what's your alternative lady yeah like like go to legoland and use that same mindset <laughs> yeah, in legoland yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah use wow. those same standards in lego like you're gonna yeah. criticize uh, Lego Liz isn't representing the real world. Yeah. Bunch of bo- 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 block <laughs> people. Star Wars Legos. For Bunch one of block people is, walking yeah. around. <laughs> who, who, you know? who invented the Legos? The Dutch? The Dutch. Uh, right, it's right. The Dutch's fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's crazy what you said, though, that... that um, like relative relativism and postmodernism doesn't can't build because there's no foundation. Yeah, what do you got? Drag, drag queen story hour. What are you gonna replace it with? It's you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> well, what do you got better? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> well, it's and and I think you have to you have to realize that in in postmodern language because uh, I would say a lot of our curriculum in our schools is 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 all relativism, even mm. going to the point of moral relativism, uh, which basically. For our modern day sense, in 2023, moral relativism says that whatever I believe to be moral is okay for me, and you have to live up. Back in the day, a true educated moral relativism is there's no such thing as morality because it's all Mm -hmm. relative. The modern sense of moral relativism is your morality, Caleb, is wrong Mine is white, right, because it's relative, <laughs> right. and then therefore you have to exhibit my moralism. And so my moralism, yeah, right. my moralism says that uh, kids can change their d- gender at, at two years old. Uh, my, there was, mm-hmm. there's this whack out study that just happened in Harvard, and there was a video on it, and we don't have it, but Harvard just put out a study on 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 children saying that. Uh, children are LGBTQ and trans all the way up until the day that they're born, and right. and, the, and their their study was yeah. the reason why they believe that a a baby boy could be gay and a and a baby girl could be lesbian is because the the baby girl likes to suck on her mother's boob for milk. I swear to God, no this is in way. this is in one of the greatest universities in America. You look it up, the Harvard <laughs> study. And it says, and the bo- baby boys are could be inherently homosexual because they play with their peepees when you're changing their diaper. Jeez. They touch them. Wow. And it's this idea of this moral relative to them. They go, and that's case closed. That's the proof we want. That's the proof. Where we're, we're, we're saying, like, we're naturally, you would say, well, both the babies like the mom's. Uh, boob, right? Uh, because it's milk, <laughs> and so they right. they want to eat, they want to feed, they want to grow. That's the way that God had created them. Yeah. And second of all, a little boy keeps uh, touching his pee pee because he has this thing hanging there. And uh, put put a put a toy right. in front of a baby, it's going to start grabbing right. it. So your little baby, he start he figures out, oh, I have it's something explained. right there, and he play he played. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just like he would with anything. Yeah, like my exactly. my son Thomas, he gets his if something's in front of him, he messes yeah. with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rather than it's not an idealism of his sexuality, but that's what moral relativism mm. says: is is we believe it to be true. We we found a minuscule amount of evidence to say this. So therefore, now because we're Harvard, now we can <laughs> uh, now we can yeah. put it in as yes, universities and have teachers who are going to be you're teachers. You're the crazy learn this one and, for believing in God, not believing in evolution, not believing in atheism, but they go and believe in this nonsense. I'm the lunatic. And all of these nonsense ideas. It's interesting. A common thread. All of these ridiculous satanic ideas all stem from the universities 100 percent. they all stem from the universities with the indoctrination of our education system that's where all of this starts because the moment they can get it in study the moment that it could come from a high university they can actually start bringing it now into the accreditation process and so you have Mm -hmm. a generation of uh, millennials but specifically now all the ones in college are gen z so now you have gen z students who are going into college 
<clears throat> to become a teacher, elementary school teacher, third grade teacher. Mm. And they're saying, hey, teachers, just so you be aware, and because it's already gone through study and it can get be curriculum implementation, now these teachers are going to be graduating, like here pretty soon in the next decade, your average teacher that's going to be educating your children is right now a 22-year-old who's in a local uh, liberal arts school. And they're going to be learning about all the ideals that Harvard and Columbia and all these schools, our studies are putting out. And they're going to say, hey, you're free to welcome to approach your your, your teaching series with these, mind, with these models in, in mm. mind. It is like, I don't think people recognize the danger that we're in yeah. that 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 your kids are with Caesar more than they are in your home. That's the reality of public mm -hmm. school. And it's yeah. built that way. It's built to spend more time at school than you are at home. And so you're at school and, and, and they've now built education to try to work with the nine to five of someone because they know it's dual income homes. So your kids, you know, at school from 730 a.m. to some of them, if they have after school program or care to 4 p.m. And then you get them, you feed them, you tell them to do homework. Like you got Saturdays with your kids and Sundays, maybe. Wow. Yeah. And then all the other time. And those that education is teaching those kids. I, I believe many teachers are in education for authentic reasons. Right. I, I think I think they, they I mean, they don't get paid enough. So they clearly just love what they do because they're not doing it for money. Um, that one teacher that just quit and started working for Costco because she makes more money working at Costco than wow. a teacher. I mean, she went viral. Yeah. But also... Um, I also think that in, in many ways, they're not really allowed to think for themselves no, if you're going to become a teacher. No, so it's built to yeah. just be, hey, teacher, teach this curriculum same and do textbooks. this. Same textbooks. You know, it's all, yeah. yeah. Same textbooks they have to go through, same concepts. And then if you're a professor and you go in the university, you have some freedom to build out your uh, curriculum. But the moment... The moment you teach something that isn't in alignment with your university, well, then you just get let go. Yeah. So, so there's more fear to assimilate in the college setting based mm -hmm. off of keeping your job or not, mm -hmm. or to fall in the plain sight. That's why um, I forget what his YouTube channel is, but he was he was from Northern California. I forget what university he was, but he was part of a liberal university. He started teaching stuff that would be more inherently uh, logical. It would fit. He's not religious in any way, but. You know, he started teaching more of a more of a religious uh, way that we view life, a uh, much more conservative way of viewing life. And uh, and he got fired for it. And he mm. has a big YouTube channel. He's always on Joe Rogan's. I forget his name. But but he was a, a, like a, a really loved professor in liberal arts. Mm. But just because just like Jordan Peterson, just because he started sharing some ideals yeah. like uh, I'm not going to call that kid by that gender pronoun. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to call them Zays or I'm not going to they start getting fired. Wow. wow. You know, and, mm. and they're completely liberal in their own. Like even like people don't know. Well, I mean, people know, but don't know. It's like Joe Rogan's a total liberal. Yeah. He just yeah. has now conservative views in certain things, but idealistically yeah. he's still pro choice and mm -hmm. he's still, uh, he's still uh, liberal in his, uh, in his uh, uh, voting things, but socialistic. Yeah. He's socialistic he and he yeah. likes yeah. Bernie, but, He's become a poster boy for a lot of conservatives because he's Dr. he's Robert pro Malone. guns. Rob Robert Robert Malone. Dr. Yeah, you got it. Old, old Robert guy, Malone. Right? He's one guy. of them. No, yeah, he might. It's a it's a younger guy. Oh, There's that's another what they guy say. They'll think like a liberal, liberal, act like a conservative. You know, like society. That's what they say. Society would be better if you just thought like a liberal but acted like a conservative. And I think that's what Joe Rogan. Realistically, he's the poster child for that. Mm -hmm. You right. know, you hear the way he talks. Mm -hmm. He's like, dude, this guy's super liberal. But you watch him go hunting. You watch him, you know, that's just yeah, the way he lives. Yeah, he's pro-Second Amendment. Yeah, not he's, aborting uh, his babies when his wife gets pregnant. You know, that yeah. type of stuff. Like, he acts yeah. like a conservative. Well, yeah, mo like mo mo most of the rich liberals are not pro-abortion in their family. They are pro-abortion right, right. for everyone else yeah, in society. Right, right. <laughs> but not them. God forbid right. <laughs> someone in the 1%, yeah. you know, like, God, and there might be little, uh, you know, well, there that, might be that, little that's an argument made with Beyonce you know? because yeah. it's like she gives off this in her messages and, and music, this independent, don't take no from any man. But like, 
but she's she's like faithfully committed to Jay Z, and she's not gonna, you right. know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. she has kind of a traditional okay. marriage, marriage yeah, and respect yeah. for her yeah. husband, and, right. and submits to him in many regards, you know, and uh, yeah, so it, it's, it's it's funny, it's, uh, yeah, it's rules for thee and yeah. not for me, yeah. oh uh, yeah, type of thing, you know, uh, and that and that flying that, in their jets and is. yet uh, uh, criticizing the, the climate change American people that. Uh, fuel and oil when you know they're flying their jets and right. their yachts and everything. You no, know? Yeah, there was this comedian bit of the open the opener from uh, not the last comedian show. Me, Jeremiah, Gabriel, we always go to comedy shows, <laughs> but this guy opened for a show and he was liberal and he was sharing that. But he started talking about abortion. He was like, "Me and my wife." He's like, "My wife is eight months pregnant," <clears throat> and he's like, "I love. We walk. You know, we take walks to Santa Monica and we just all the liberals there. You know, we love them. I'm liberal, whatever." And he's like. But I love to see the look on their face when they, you know, congratulate me and my wife. Eight months pregnant. Oh, my. What is it? A girl or whatever. And they go, oh, yeah. No, it's been amazing. Pregnancy has been amazing. We're not going to keep her, though. And his wife is eight months pregnant. Oh, yeah. We're not keeping it, though. And he yeah. said, you should see the look on their face when their jaw drops. And they're just shook. And it's like you believe in this thing, abortion, yeah. that it's good. But when it's right in front of you looking you in the face, it's it's terrifying. Just yeah. like our nature is terrified of that concept. Mm -hmm. You see a seven month uh, pregnant, seven month pregnant lady, and she's gonna tell you she's gonna abort her baby. That doesn't feel right. Yeah, intrinsically. Right. And so that was a trippy, and it was part of a a, a comedy bit, you <laughs> yeah, know. His bit. And yeah. it, so I was like, dude, that is heavy. Yeah. It's deep. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. That that's the thinking is is no. It's 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 a good idea for those that are that are poor. It's a, instead mm -hmm. of discussing. How do we lift people out of poverty instead of discussing how do we create opportunity for people that are maybe in a place that's less fortunate so that they could come out of a place of poverty so that they could raise a family so that they could have children. Instead, it's like, well, how can we perpetuate a system mm. where we can give them welfare because we feel good about it? We're helping people. We give them welfare. But. God forbid the moment someone starts getting a job, they strip the welfare from you and you mm -hmm. have to choose, yeah. you know, whether you can go one or two months before one pay kicks in, before the welfare kicks in and all these other things like that. I mean, it's a system that is kind of meant to just deal with that economic of people, those people in that position. Yeah. And so this complex of we're doing a right thing for pro-choice, it's like, well, you know, Maybe I did it when I was younger, but us is we're like financially stable. And I, like, God forbid, we would never do something like that, nor would we ever let our children mm. do something right. like that. And so it's this hypocrisy that we live in um, on a regular basis. And like Caleb said, like, what w would you like Disneyland to do that instead? Would you like Disneyland to put a Planned Parenthood uh, <laughs> in the park? <laughs> you know, right like what, what, you know, what do yeah. you want when someone's trying to show what society's capable of mm. and by all means would have imperfections in themselves and maybe in their decisions. But at the same time, like what are you trying, what do you want to build rather than criticism? Cause yeah. you know, and the postmodern thing, the thing thinkers is are the, really the good thing, at criticism. The only yeah. thing that, that is like has been successful is when you go back to those traditional values and norms, you know, the, the there's a reason avatar is so successful because it didn't get into the LGBTQ relationships. It didn't mm -hmm. get into any of that. It was a traditional family story structure, yeah. uh, great lessons, you know, and all that. And then you have Maverick, you have Tom, Tom Cruise, Gun. you have Top Gun. Gun. Top like literally, literally <laughs> no woke movie I don't think has ever made money. I don't even think it's ever made money. Mm -hmm. The the, the mm -hmm. first rom-com gay, rom-com bros, the bros, bros go, goes bros or bros something. Definitely uh, you know, Lost, you know, yeah. tens of billions, oh, millions, of millions. huge flop. Yeah. I mean, every, every, everything Strange world by Disney turns just lost to, you know, what, money. To, to quote that's why right by it. They put it on one. the main yeah. Disney Plus page, too, and it's still not oh, getting Oh, dude, it's funny story. Nathan, Nathan, you know, our brother, he goes, uh, his son Ezra goes, Dad, I want to see, he saw the ads for it. It's, I want to see Strange World. But Disney, he's like, yeah, let's do it. So they had a Monday off. He, they <laughs> Nathan, Nathan takes Enzo and Ezra, his two sons. They're sitting in the movie theater, big popcorn, big Slurpees, trailer. I mean, I think within the second scene, they they solidify. Nathan tells me, he goes, I'm sitting there. He's like, you know, father, son, it looks cool, blah, blah, blah. And then out of the, whatever he said, out of the car, I haven't seen it, out of the car or whatever, this guy that comes out 
pierced ear on you know one side just and he goes i mean it's clear as day it's clear mm. as day Damn. what this movie is going to be about who the mm. character is and he goes and i looked at my sons and i was like boys you better pick up your popcorn <laughs> right now we gotta walk out of here and uh, and he got up and walked out but he was like dude they they tricked me like i had you know, I didn't know until I wow. got in mm. that it's gonna it's gonna be be about that. But again, it, it lost ton. Of, and they always say there wasn't enough marketing, there wasn't enough advertising. I'm like, you tell yourself whatever you want, but at yeah. the end of the day, uh, people do. At the end of the day, it's rules for thee and not for me. They yeah. believe in traditional family values. They just don't want to sound arrogant for saying that. So on the outside, they'll say, oh, I'm totally for it. Live however you want. Be whatever you want. And then they'll think to themselves, but in my family, in my household, right. like we're going to hold traditional family values. Mm -hmm. That you know, it, That's what they're going to do. And so, you know, uh, it's the same thing. Like, like Nancy, give, give me your hot take. I got to know. Let's go. My Let, hot not, take. Not on what I just said, but this whole, because I don't speak Spanish, <laughs> this whole Latino and Latinx thing like is that even a thing oh, oh my gosh in this in your question. spanish speaking community no i've never heard that before so basically mm. what you're explaining is removing the aspect of a latina versus latino which so, is which, which is, is differentiating and female, yeah um, yeah between yeah female and male, latino yeah i've never heard that in my life before but when i first heard it be said it it bothered me because i'm like wait well, that's like billboards in la as you're driving on the 10 freeway, hey, really? I it says seen. it says it is not Latino. It is Latin X. No. And it says no. sponsored by blah, 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 blah. That's so you know, arrogant. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, made by white liberals telling no, Hispanics what they should be. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. not but, okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, or, absolutely. Or liberally educated Hispanics who went to Cal State LA or whatever else yeah. and was told mm. by their white professor, this is this is the yeah. right thing to do. This is inclusive. Yeah. Gender inclusive. Dancy, mm, continue. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna walk around. So you've never met anyone that used Latinx, Latinx or, or never, anything like that? No, I've never okay. met anybody. I mean, I recently heard it, but what would you do if you met me and we were speaking Spanish uh, and I was like, uh, I was like, no, Nancy, it's not Latino, it's Latinx. But I was a, a, a peer, a Spanish-speaking peer. Mm -hmm. what, what would your response be? I would be respectfully, I'm a Latina, and <laughs> what I see, you know. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to approach it in a way where I'm disrespecting. Uncaring, yeah, right. uncaring. Um, but personally, for me, I, I, I'm a Latina. I'm a female, so that's where the A comes from. And in Spanish, when you're using words, um, there's a lot of words that have like a a, a female uh, connotation to it, or when you say it, it's like. Um, I'm trying to think of a word, but I'll probably have to come back to that. But it's just like you're speaking it and you're using an A ah or a O. Oh, so right. you're identifying something as, you know, whether it's for a guy or a girl. So I, I don't know. That's going to be very interesting. I've yeah, never so run into anybody like that. So if I said someone was like a Chicano, am I, am I supposed to say Chicano. Chicken, chicken necks? Chicken necks. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what about gordo and yes. gorda? Oh, yeah. <laughs> See, words like that. Oh, that's true. Words like that. How the entire language that's is built a, on feminine it's going to be a whole other alphabet or then. Now, or yeah. It's ruined. But I, but I forgot what what company it was, but they just did a they just did a survey with uh, you know, thousands of Hispanics and I, and I think like I think literally it was like 95% were offended by Latinx. Yeah, it was mm. yeah. Like are literally Definitely. offended by it. But they're still uh, on an educational <laughs> side um, because you know, I I work in education sector and so and so in many of the secular universities and liberal arts universities they're they're not like where you check your race you don't check uh like latino or latina it's like you check latin x so you're mm. forcing you're forcing yeah, again they're moral they're trying relativism to yeah. yeah this is our they're story that we have they approved want, the world it's, they want it's yeah. the postmodern world it's the it's it's whatever we have deemed that the world should look like in the it's a religion it's 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 a religion by definition yeah. there are it's rules propaganda. there it's are agenda. structures yeah. there are forms you are a religion yeah. and so atheism is a religion this uh, liberal arts universities are a religion because if i'm supposed to be a university that says we welcome free thought we welcome wrestle but yet it says but 
you know, we're not talking about ethical dilemmas. Mm -hmm. We're just talking about natural semantics, language. Right. right. But you have to do this. You have to put your pronouns in your Zoom call. You have to, you know, first you have to introduce yourself at every mm. class. My, we, you know, we had a person. Um, That's like worse than the Mosaic Law. Six hundred and six. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> uh, oh dude. There's, six, there, there's way more. We we had a um we had a parent um from our church who their daughter went to a liberal arts school and at at every university there's always some some form something known as freshman seminar which mm -hmm. is it's basically assimilation classes mm -hmm. so so they say hey even christian universities do it you have freshman seminar those are usually biblical foundation ones but you learn about the history of the university you learn about culture of the university and also um, freshman responsibilities while well, these liberal arts ones are spending full at the beginning of the classes you have to write a paper on how you're going to be uh, inclusive in your language wow. towards the mm. LGBT community and how you have to take a class on, on trans and, and you have to you understand pronouns. To do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we yeah, taxpayers paying. are paying for those yeah. public universities. And so... Oh, public universities, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we are. Our tax dollars oh, are yeah, going right. to those things. Yeah. And even even the you know private schools are doing this now, and so donors are, going, are paying to this. Do you, ha do you guys know if you... Can you say no? Can you? It, no. Or, or oh you gosh, can't... no. No, 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 no. Yeah, you can't yeah, say you no. Can't. no. Oh, they'll because usually freshman seminar is an assimilation class. Which, other words, mm -hmm. like if you can't get through freshman seminar, like you're not going to make it in this university. So, so you so, can't offer an alternative to that. It's like you either do that or no, or you fail the assignment. You fail this. You know, mm -hmm. maybe, well, therefore you fail the F. class. Yeah. Yeah. Or you, yeah, and then you could. And there's enough of it in freshman seminar that if you don't do it based off of. Uh, convictions or whatever i bet you this i mean i don't know for sure it'd be pure speculation i bet you this that uh no one is allowed the opportunity to not do it except for muslim students muslim yeah. students <laughs> is still muslims are still the ones i was talking to someone uh this has actually been a funny story at this point so i was talking to someone recently and, and I, I don't want to nuance anything but they work for a very big company um a very famous company and uh because they're christian they were um, they were brought uh, into the workplace to to talk about um, basically what they were trying to do is they were trying to exclude Christians as if you're a Christian and if you say anything against the LGBTQ population, we have a right to let you go. Well, that impedes on religious freedoms at mm, that point. Wow. So they were actually trying to get this individual fired for being a Christian, basically. And so when me and the individual was talking, I was like, hey, what you should do first is you should replace the language of a Christian and you should say you're a Muslim and see see if oh, they continue yeah, yeah, down that road yeah. of letting it wow. and, and instead of sin. And then actually mm. turns out before it even got there, uh, one of the higher ups in the company said, 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 not only are we not going to let you go, but but we're going to we're going to put you in charge of building a team that allows all religions to practice their religion our company regardless of this LGBTQ agenda. Yeah. And I was praying with this individual that God would do something miraculous. Wow. And to me that was huge wow. that it actually flipped. Wow. And thank you that there was an executive on that company, a very big company who was willing to say, "You know what? No. Like I'm not going to play that game. You know, policy is religions are open to believe what they want." And we're not wow. going to, you know, we're not going to do anything. And there was huge opportunity. But for me at the time, I was like, I was like, you should totally, totally just start using language of, of, of Muslim and Islam and say, oh, no, I'm not saying it's yeah. sin. I'm saying it's haram. You know, wow. like they're going to. And I, you know, I think the universities, they'll back up from that because it's always um, it's 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 a it's a it's a war of um, it's not a war of classism, but it's a war of uh like the disenfranchised. And so, you know, like um, you mm. see that you see that in those uh, in those liberal caucus debates. Like if you're a woman, you're better than a man. If you're uh, if you're a trans man, that's a woman. You're better than a woman. No. If you're uh, yeah. if you're a if you're a it's trans the woman, Olympics. that's better. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. like a poker. And then, a poker, uh, and then like what supersedes yeah. is what yeah what <laughs> supersedes all of that right. is if you're a gay black man now you're now you're the one who's the yeah. most wow. now you're the pope Full yeah house. <laughs> <laughs> but still to this day what's above that is if you're muslim in america 
that still trumps royal flush. all of those royal. things. You know? <laughs> royal that, flush. That's the uh, royal flush. I didn't know Muslims were at the top. Oh, yeah. Oh, the yeah. Top G's Currently on that right list, now. Bro. Yeah. I mean, it, it depends who you ask, but by large, it still is. Like in a university set, setting and stuff like that, like the person who's, who's Muslim still, you know, has the most protections you know, against anyone else and the most freedoms against anyone else. And the next would be like the trans person. Wow. So would you wow. say it's because of the Muslim like lifestyle <coughs> and how they are and how it's respected versus the Christianity? No, I don't not? think it's respected. I think that because of 9-11, uh. the oppression that they faced in America, mm. because it's always surrounded, it's always surrounded around a shroud that um, we somehow have to, uh, you know, we somehow have to uh, appeal to to your common decency. So it's like we have to. We need someone needs forgiveness. So it, this is an American Western structure. It would be very different in, in other cultures, but for an American Western structure, we're still you know making up for our, our sins from 9-11 of how we judged um though you know Sanaz has been on here before and has shared yeah. uh, you know how her father was treated how she was treated how they process stuff and so that's why the muslim still gets that trump because of the because of the judging in the western world of, of their hijabs because of the the judging of of them as them using language of terrorism and mm -hmm. and how they still get judged by tsa to this day yeah. and so and so you know yeah. that's mainly where, yeah. where it comes from like a like a like a trans person for the most part goes through tsa fine like they yeah. don't get they don't get ridiculed or anything like that but a muslim still does so it's like kayla said it's it's kind of the oppression olympics i don't think muslims use it to their advantage per se but at the same time like the 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 liberal arts section of society has deemed it upon themselves mm -hmm. who's more yeah. disenfranchised than the other mm -hmm. and you get different treatment so the worst of the worst is a white christian male yeah. they they yeah. they are oh. the worst in in a liberal straight. art society, white Christian, straight, right straight Christian, Christian man. Well, That's like the yeah, victimization yeah, yeah. equity <laughs> you're talking, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's victim. So if 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 you're in a university that's a liberal arts university and you are a white straight Christian male. Good luck. You so know, that's why like, that's why that's why in liberal cities and areas I'm Mexican, and in Republican <laughs> uh, cities and areas I, I identify as white. I, <laughs> I have a question to pose then about this conversation, and yeah. the question is. Do you? How do you think this is gonna go? Uh, not how you hope it goes or anything like that. How do you think this is gonna go? Do you think corporations are tolerating this philosophy because they think that you know we were talking about statistics earlier. I think they said um, conservatives are out birthing liberals like three to one right now. Mm -hmm. So if you, yeah, ten, fifteen years or in almost right. twenty years, the main demographic of society is gonna be conservative, you know, kids or whatever. Do you think corporations are tolerating that because they have the money and be like, let's give this thing 15 years and we'll throw whatever money to make these movies, to make this stuff, we'll tolerate it? Or do you think this philosophy is going to take hold and just take off? Well, mm -hmm. you always have you always have the you always have the education sector that's sometimes different than the real world. So. A lot of things we're talking right. about right now is is what's happening in academia, right. and then and then what kind of bleeds into the media and and some other areas, but but predominantly the media in Hollywood, the media in Hollywood, the media it's all in Hollywood. Yeah. yeah, and and the reality is the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So you have individuals who you know many of these young, uh, particularly their Gen Z, who are who are. Um, identifying as different pronouns and want this, they're testing the system in, in, in corporations. So they're the squeaky wheel. They're getting, they're the loudest. It's like what happened with Spotify when employees wanted Joe Rogan off of their podcast and, and they boycotted. And it just so happens the CEO is not an American. So he's like, I don't really care about your American politics. You want right. to leave Spotify, leave Spotify. You don't, you don't write. Cause he's not an American. So he's just like, wow. I'm not playing Elon Musk. Like I'm not playing your American games. It's he's from a different culture. He's mm -hmm. from a different mentality. He's African. So yeah. <laughs> He's, he's or Canadian, African, whatever African. one. If he's, he's in Canada, he's Canadian. If he's right. in Africa, he's <laughs> but in those ways, that that's the way I see it. Is like, but these American corporations and, and 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 businesses are way more volatile than we think it is, and their bottom line does matter. And a good quarter or a bad quarter sometimes can mean all the difference for those companies. Mm. So when they have a group of people in their company who are making 
you know, complaining and whining and going to HR and going on to LinkedIn and going on to these places and complaining about the company, they do. They get scared because they don't know what this is going to do to their bottom line. It's the whole Target situation. When Target announced, hey, we're going to be doing uh, we're do going to be doing transgender bathrooms. This was like five years ago. And all of the Christians in America were like, okay, we don't shop at Target anymore. In one week, they lost billions of dollars from Christians not shopping there anymore. And then they said, you know what? We're going to not do wow. that anymore because the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So for a while, they thought, oh, it's the trans population. They're making the most noise. They're issuing because, the complaints. Because in their, you little, know, like, in, in their little echo chamber, Twitter, that, that yeah. which isn't doesn't reflect real life, these liberal circles, that doesn't reflect the average person. Right. That's where they get it wrong. That's where these big companies get it wrong. And then they, they realize it when they don't make money and they lose millions of dollars. And when they finally step on the toes of yeah. the majority or of the people who could be the loudest if they wanted to. But we just, you know, everyone, we everybody wakes up every day. We choose to, um, you know, for me, I can say I choose to love my wife. I choose to love my kids. I choose to go to work. I'm not out there picketing. I'm not out there protesting. And so I'm not making any noise. Mm. But when you come after me, then I'm then I'm going to make noise. I'm going to make my pocketbook shout. So I'm not buying Disney's movies. Uh, you know, like there was a time where um, the LGBTQ community almost 10 years ago tried boycotting Chick-fil-A. And guess yeah. what the Christians did? They said for an entire week, we're yeah. all going to only go to Chick-fil-A. And Chick-fil-A had the best month of their of their uh, history, history earnings. Because oh, when wow. you poke and it's the fascinating bear, that you know, the, that, like, that the wow. left that doesn't have that same sort of uh, like unity. Because you think about all these feminist movies and these gay movies, the the, the bros movie, like where where, where were all these where are yeah. all these uh, hundreds of millions of of liberals showing support to gay bros or or, or brother <laughs> bros hoes or something well maybe like they that. do have the unity they're called? just not as many as they claim to be it's, it's yeah a, exactly yeah it's a well, very they, small they, minority they, they may they yeah. may have it's a small minority but also they you you cannot as a person you cannot identify you cannot create around an identity around your sexuality yeah um heterosexual yeah. individuals don't do that we don't we don't build an identity off of the fact that i like women or that women like men homosexuality in the lgbtq community they will and, and i'm not i'm not bullying in any way it's just it's just a, in a it's it's an observance but they tend to make their identity that that's why you have the gay flag. That's why you have a trans flag. That's why you do gay t-shirts and trans t-shirts. There's an identity around who you like to be mm. with and sleep with and all these things. One well, heterosexual communities and specifically religious communities. So Islam, Judaism, yeah. Christianity, we don't, we actually build our identities around normally when we're functioning at our best, we're, we generally build our identities around loving God, loving others, mm. loving our community, loving our family. And so it's a, it's a non-self view of the world. And so what yeah. do we do? We support the things we believe in. So in actuality, people in the LGBTQ community, even though they're trying to build an identity around their sexuality, it's not, it doesn't happen in practice. So when a movie or whatever comes out just about that, well, there's a lot of gay individuals who don't want to watch who don't even mm, like that guy yeah, that yeah. actor right and we've talked so about they, this you with, know like we've talked about this with uh with the, the wnba you know we're we're, 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 we're we're all the feminists supporting the wnba filling the seats and you know uh, you know they, they're not there because 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 human nature is human nature they're making the and sport to, around to being female point, and that's to not answer what your sport point, is about. Yeah. human to answer your point like you're never going to break human nature human nature is always it's a pendulum you know it's just always going to kind of swing back if it goes too far left it's going to swing back right and i think that's what you're going to see is, is is you're not it's not going to get a hold i don't think i don't mm. think it's going to get a hold the, no this i think extreme i think leftist, uh, yeah i think i think at some point sexualized yeah, you know i think at some point society is going to say uh, this isn't benefiting us, and this isn't yeah. perfecting us, uh, progressing us in any way. And enough stuff is going to be put into practice that isn't going to work. That um, be because you know most of the individuals that are that are particularly in in the LGBTQ community, uh, generally, and this is just by statistics, generally are dealing with a lot of mental health issues. They deal with a lot of pain from past. It's it's a lot of their decisions are trauma based, mm. and and so and so. 
when you're bringing trauma based stuff into starting a family and having a family and all these things, it, it doesn't necessarily, it's not happening in practice. And so as we see this lace out, I, I think you're going to see more and more people say, this isn't practical, but right now, specifically the Gen Z generation is being told this is possible. There's a utopian world where you can embrace whatever sexuality and whatever gender you want. And so they're running for that and they're gunning for it because they're searching for identity. They're searching for a purpose and they're being told mm. they're being told in, in, in junior high, high school and college. Hey, you guys will have purpose once you figure out your sexuality. I'm like, gosh, I figured out my sexuality and I'm married with kids. And, and, and I'm still struggling, right. you know, at times. I'm still trying to figure this life out. It's this it's this false pursuit of happiness yeah. that says happiness is just in finding the right gender that you need to identify in. Happiness is just figuring out what facilities that you need, whether you're going to be happy having uh, genitals or you're going to be happy having breasts. And then they do it and they go, well, hey, I still have all the same issues that I had before. Issue, yeah. Maybe yeah. that yeah. explains because I have a family member who's a therapist and they lean more liberal, but um, they were shocked how quick they took out the gender dysphoria out of the DSM-5, which is like a therapist's Bible. Mm -hmm. They took out all of that language regarding, um, you know, um, choosing your gender as negative. And so they totally shifted quick. And you just said Harvard just did a study. The therapy community instantly jumped on it. Do you think it's because they would have lost, the, the whole community would have lost clientele and that they those are their main clients? Yeah. And that's well, why well, they change it. Because why did they jump yeah. on it so quick? Like what, Gage what I would made, know, he yeah. won't know. He won't tell you. I don't know how it changed so quick. Well, I, I, I mean, I have a theory. So tell it. I think. <laughs> <laughs> tell us the theory. You know, I'm a very red person. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think mainly what it is. So, so here's what we do know, because because the alternative, uh, we're talking about, um, um, uh, we're talking about psychology and therapy and stuff like that. So. The previous alternative form of counseling that would happen for someone who's in the LGBTQ community or anything like that, the, the original alternative, which is what many churches are still doing, which doesn't work, is conversion therapy. So, so conversion therapy says, basically con conversion therapy says, okay, as you're exploring your identity and other stuff like that in this area, l let's, just say, let's just say I identify as a gay man. Uh, and then I start thinking, well, I don't want these feelings. Uh, I don't want to have these emotions. And so therefore, I feel my life would be easier if I was just heterosexual. Well, then what conversion therapy, which is the historic form of therapy, would say is, well, then let's start to trace steps so that you can become heterosexual. And guess what? It's not that easy for oh, a gay yeah. man right. to become a straight man. Right. And so in therapy, because either you're going to teach me to embrace what it is that I'm feeling, because you can't teach me to not embrace it, because if I don't, that other form of conversion therapy has not worked. It mm. does not work. And it's not worked for many reasons. But, but you know... Uh, we, you know, we as Christians, we, we hold to original sin. We hold to right. struggles that you may have your whole life. We, there's a lot of answers that we have within both the Christian faith, but even the Abrahamic faiths uh, as well. So what you're doing in therapy is you're saying the moment they can find new data that's so supposed to help a person. So instead, I'm going to say a person who says, um, I think I'm I think I could be homosexual because something happened to me when I was six. Well, what the what the new therapy and the new data suggests, I could say, you know what? No, it's not because of that, because you could have been that since you were born because and babies are starting that. to touch themselves. So now they're help, trying to help them embrace wow. this as fast yeah. as possible. And then even telling, that's why they're telling first graders, second graders, third graders, let's start giving you testosterone. Let's start giving you estrogen. Let's start letting you change your gender because the sooner we think that the sooner you can embrace it, the sooner you'll be happier wow. in life. Because the other conversion therapy thing, which is Christians are saying, which is just our humanity dealing with our sin, but in therapy that doesn't embrace religion or a religious structure that says, I don't have an answer for why you want to be heterosexual or don't want to identify as this gender as this. So then, in, in fact, let's try to get you convinced to embrace this thing as fast as possible, wow. even your second grader. 
Even in parts of England where they are forcing parents at second and third grade, either they go to prison in parts of Canada, either you go to prison or you start giving your child uh, gender uh, change pills. Wow. Two choices. Well, there's a there's a fascinating case. It's it's famous. I wish I remember the name. He was on Oprah and everything. But um, when he was a baby, he was circumcised, and the doctor mutilated him, and so they his they had to like cut it off, and um, and so um, they basically decided to uh, raise him as a girl, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. and so they raised him as a girl. Uh, throughout his, his, his developmental years, they gave him uh, estrogen uh, hormones. And, but he was a boy, and, and so he, he, he could never uh, shake that, the fact. I mean, they, they put dresses on him. I mean, it was a, a perfect case of, like, you know, is, is it nature or nurture mm. when it comes to your gender, when it comes to, you know, boyhood, girlhood. So anyways, so he finds out that he's a boy he he was in fact a boy and you know you can only imagine the trauma and that wow. he dealt with and i think you're gonna have a, a yeah. he ended up he ended up uh david reimer yeah david that's reimer. him david reimer and he ended up uh Good getting kid. married he ended up getting married and trying to act as a man but he was just so messed up from yeah. all of the the hormones and and the psychological trauma. He ended up committing suicide. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you know, I think that that's a case study where the more this type of stuff happens, um, and, and we transgender our kids from early ages, you're going to have more and more situations are, like that. And yeah. it's we're, you're already starting to see it. But I think it's what's break, happen what, more. what angers me and break my breaks my heart the most is is. Um, how this is affecting the the um the autism community because mm. uh so many young children who have autism obviously obviously in general their development is impeded and you have a lot of um autistic children who are just i playing with stuff playing with doll they're, 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 they 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 don't fit into the cultural norms so they're playing with dolls or the girls playing with GI Joes and um, they're, um, they watch Miss Rachel on YouTube, who's, you know, the big, uh, it's my girl, you know, like the blippy of, of today. And, mm. and so really? it's a young boy. That's thing? Yeah. Oh. That's a new, it's a girl named Miss Rachel. That's, that's his jam. Oh, none right. of my boys, Auntie. none of my boys got on it, but, um, yeah. <laughs> pretty sick i, I remember they were, those they years. were blippy she makes 10 million a month <laughs> mine, mine, <laughs> i'm mine, mr rachel mine bro. was the, the wrong uh, business dude <laughs> mine was the uh, uh there's a party in my tummy so yummy what's that one the, the wiggles yo, yo gabba gabba oh for yo gabba gabba why didn't gabba have that in the murder no that's your game only like 12 i think so he's probably like 12 years old but that's your game was only like 12 i think so he probably watched it too he but I say, but I say that to say is like you could do the research on on the gender change that they're doing for kids with autism. Yeah. In this season, it, because for a parent who has children with autism, uh, ninety nine percent of them are, are going to heavily rely on on state provided programs. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so every resource, everything they have is going to be state funded because mm. they get the money to do it. And there's these there's specialty care for kids with autism, but additionally into that now also comes their philosophies. And so so these kids that are autistic, they're being asked at fifth and sixth grade, and, you know, do you identify as a boy or a girl? And they don't, they don't know. Yeah. And so they're just like, I could be. Do you find boys attractive? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. And there's full TikTok pages um, dedicated towards people in the autistic community who do drag shows and trans shows and identify as gay wow. and lesbian. But don't like being touched at the same time. They don't. They don't even yeah. want a sexual partner. Right. It just that's what they're being told, and wow. and and they're and and they're being told, oh, you'll be happy if you do this, or you'll be fulfilled if you do this. And so, this mentality is much deeper than we realize in terms of just assuming this is a grown adult who's twenty five who's deciding to do this. Oh, this is a grown woman, a grown man who's thirty who decided wearing heels or a dress or pants. I mean, these these are these are these are six years old, seven year olds. Who are who are being pushed into this direction to say, yeah, you you should start. And you have many of the many of the Western liberalized states like Canada and England who are already saying, uh, parents, if your third and fourth grader genuinely believes that they want to make this transition, we're going to do it with or without you. That's it. 
like to me, you know, like I'm you playing with fire now, you know, <laughs> right. like no, you know. What don't make, don't make me oh, lose my salvation. On the national, on the, national, on the national, national autistic, autistic society, society autism and gender identity. It's I mean, its it own has, page. Yeah, yeah. On yeah. everything. Mm. Wow. It's got everything from gender dysphoria to personal stories. Yeah. It's its own category. Wow. Yeah. Sheesh. And yeah, it's they're this, they're coming in hot. It's, yeah. It's it's a a religion, and I think um, it's interesting. The common link is they always use the medical industry. Yeah. They always use doctors be, behind every major issue of these things, from abortion and everything. They get through the medical industry. Um, it becomes corrupted, and um, you know, from from pharmaceuticals to uh, these these transgender surgeries to abortion you know i think um i think it's it, it we need to really be um we need to really be aware well this is what i was going to say um doctors have become the priestly class in our current in our current society so if it's a good reflection did you reflect on that yourself yeah this is my I like own that. original thought that's good so you know the, the what a lot of people don't know is for thousands of years the priests the religious leaders oh, were yeah. the form they were the medical doctors yeah, they, they even in the, the bible, miracles even they, in the bible yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's why jesus says when he healed show yourself to the priests yeah. so that they can confirm that you know it's valid. They, so yeah, they were so, the experts. Yeah. So white coats are the priestly class in our society, mm-hmm. and um, and y- you have too many people um, who look to them as gods and look to them as infallible, and definitely our media and our government and our politics definitely pushes mm. that message. Mm. Fauci is God. Fauci might as well be. Oh, Cyrus. Yeah. Um, as far as the media and politics is concerned, you don't speak. They'll against put him, him on the ten dollar bill don't. one day. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so uh. that's something to really be aware of in our society. This is something that uh, a very important a uh, worldview idea that I will be communicating to my children um, okay. is that you know <laughs> the seriousness in this juncture. <laughs> yeah, right yeah, now. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that that, that doctors are the priestly class. Yeah. Real, of our current religion of secular postmodernism, uh, the doctors are yeah. the priestly class, and don't be gullible. Just because a doctor says something is true does not mean that it's true. Do your research. Look into alternative. Just medicine, like we say in the church. Remedies, I mean, we're not hypocrites. Holistic therapy. We say yeah. go to a church and weigh out yeah. what the pastor is saying with the word. Like, and if yeah. a it's pastor, like, uh, if a pastor know? commits some some grievous error, we're we're the first ones to call him out. We call him out. We call out. You know, we 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 even I we even uh, uh, take it on ourselves and say we are sorry as a church. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. We're sorry these priests are doing what they're doing. We are sorry. We feel like you know we feel that, and we want to apologize to the world. That people, brother, uh, people of our churches are committing these grievous sin, sexual sins, and so on. Yeah. That, but you don't see the same thing in the medical community. It's like mm. you can't touch doctors; they, they are gods in our society, you know. And, and so, if a doctor does run off of the approved, you know, language, then they then they go, oh, "Okay, you're out." Like you don't fit right, into our narrative, right, yeah. you're out. Like a doctor isn't allowed to think for himself, too. So yeah. you have mm-hmm. other doctors go, "Hey, I don't know about, I don't know that it's been good this vaccine. I think it's caused some issues." Nope, you're out. Like yeah. they can't even just critically offer a, a and a, they can't a, speak a, against a thought, other doctors. Right? Like yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They cannot publicly yeah. speak out against another doctor. Yeah. You know, and uh, and it's it's just fascinating to me because the church <laughs> gets so much hate. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and, you know, <laughs> Ra- Ravi Zacharias comes out as what he did, and now all pastors are guilty, and yeah. all pastors are evil, all churches are evil, but all these doctors, but Pfizer have making all them of these billies. malpractice, <laughs> them billies, man. I mean, billions. It, it's literally yeah. like it's literally like the, the third leading cause of preventable death. It's either number one or number three is is medical malpractice. Yeah. The, the third leading cause of preventable Preventable death is medical malpractice, you know. Jeez. And so, anyways, that's that is a crazy thought. Food for thought. <laughs> well, who do you think? Because <laughs> who do you think thought. they'll ever? Do you think they'll ever change who they submit to? Because academia, safe to say, academia started this. Um, the the yeah. moving the the gender. They li- they lived in a sect of society that was very nobody even heard about this. Maybe started here about ten years ago, but it was like a fantasy, right? Yeah, this psychology class. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And so it's like w- they're discrediting. It's so arrogant that they're discrediting every doctor in the last fifty years, and they're saying you guys are by discrediting, um, by calling it gender dysphoria, you are 
doing, a, you're pretty much back in the lobotomy days, right? Like mm -hmm. they're discrediting all the doctors before, but when doctors stop kind of what I think is going to happen, is doctors going to stop dealing with this because a lot of doctors don't agree with a lot of stuff. You see um, Matt Walsh and his whole thing, and he's always having these, um, when he's talking about what is a woman in his whole documentary, the lady asks him, well, you're not a scientist, yeah. <laughs> well, you're not a scientist yeah. though, and he's like, right, "This right, guy's right. brilliant though, yeah. like, and not whatever." But he's, he's just a, a smart guy. He's not a priest. He's just not a scientist. Yeah. Well, but he, he think, doesn't have a white coat. He's not think, a priest. I yeah. think, I think Bill Nye yeah. has his bachelor's in in engineering. Oh my god! You know? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't even have a doctor. He's like Frank Abagnale, <laughs> <Right>. bro. <laughs> don't even. It's <laughs> like, have a like he went to Oxford. You know? He has a doctorate, and there he is calling out Arkin Ham, our creation boy. Boy, okay. How okay. dare you <laughs> go into the going to the Ark Center, bro? And, and you with your Acting bachelor's like in engineering, it, bro. mechanical That's engineering <laughs> from Cornell, <laughs> mechanical engineering from Cornell. From Cornell. Cornell. That's his highest. Like he split the atoms. That's as high as it goes. <laughs> but he does have an Emmy. The, the dude, yeah, yeah the, he's the, an dude, Emmy, the yeah. dude puts on a PBS yeah. show and puts a white coat on. To Caleb's point. The dude yep. wears a the yeah. guy the guy it's, it's the, the guy is basically playing he's he's cops you know he's in, he's in chips wow. you know the the he's, <laughs> <laughs> like 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 how chips with those guys those two guys back in the nineties were playing cops yeah. like they couldn't actually pull people over but you got Bill Nye <laughs> putting on a white yeah. coat when on PBS <laughs> and then he's going on to, he's going on to the View with the white yeah. jacket right at CNN. But, Oh, yeah, acting like tight. a doctor. <laughs> right, right. That's <laughs> scary, dude. You're not a you're not a psychologist. You're not a therapist. You're mechanical. not a you're not you know you're not you don't have your PhD it's in anything. And here you, but again, it's this fallacy that oh well, we just deemed him. He's wearing a look. He's wearing a white jacket. He's got to know him. some things. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, and so we disregard uh, or, or we and we lack critical thinking, which is one of the biggest issues in modern education is. For you to think for yourself, for you to critically think for yourself, does this sound right? Does this make sense? If something makes sense to you, then by all means, go for it. But but if it doesn't, I mean, you got to be able to say, hey, I think this is a little odd. I think this is a little yeah. weird while we're doing X, Y, and Z. Why yeah. society wants my kids? Yeah. Why, why, why should society make my freshman in college, my child... Uh, do a paper on how they're going to be inclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then in the same time, I want that same person to do a paper on how they're going to include my Christian child into their language, yeah, right. how they're going to respect my and that, yeah. No, we're not doing that. It's not, you know, no, no, no. Right. And that's you know? the good in postmodernism, right? Like being able to step outside of the box, say, what's good about this? What is up with this? Or that's not how it should be. But it's such well, a, that's good with liberalism. Not all liberalism yeah, yeah. is bad. Right, right. Leftism is the extremist that's pretty much all evil. But yeah, not not all liberalism Liberal thinking, is bad. Yeah. Liberal thinking yeah, as far sure. as, you know, like... Yeah, and we've like, said that before. Well, like, well, this is what I thought because in the early 2000s, uh, I admit to this day the liberals were, were right about the Middle East and the war. They were right. Mm -hmm. the, the conservative Christians were wrong. There were no weapons of mass destruction, and the liberals were the only ones that were calling that out. The, the liberals were the only ones that were calling Bush out. You know, and we, statements like these and, why Caleb doesn't have social media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah his, I know. His, he's, he's, his, his, his inbox would be, uh, would be blowing he's up. He's our top G. <laughs> <laughs> he's our top G. You People can't find like, him. He's a ghost. Don't you dare, don't you but, dare but, talk but, about. <laughs> but no, but what I'm saying is like objectively, though, I can at least say that weapons of well, mass destruction were alive. Well, you have modern-day veterans that are pissed that were yeah, like, they're, man, they're, yeah, I lost yeah, you friends have, you in have this tons war. Like, you know, you like, have tons of uh, veterans in the Middle East that feel duped, and, and yep. they lost limbs, and they they, they're they permanently disfigured. Their mental and, health. and they're like, for what? Mm. It was a lie. It was so that they can get rich and yeah. oil and all that. But but the liberals were right. Us Christian, us conservatives, we, we didn't critically fight. think. We, 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 fight, we were fight, like, fight. oh, <laughs> yes. We yeah. got, you know, um, you know, and so— uh, the, the not yeah i say that to say is i think it's liberalism m more liberalism not all liberalism is necessarily mm, bad yeah um i think leftism which is a lot of what we're talking about with the lgbtq and changing and uh, changing you know genders and trying to transgender kids and all it's like that's a leftist extremism yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. that is objectively evil and bad yeah 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 absolutely because we've talked about before like in terms of uh liberal thinking which is 
you know, thinking something liberally, loosely, you know, approaching something loosely and addressing it, looking at it in all angles. Like modern day non-denominational evangelical Christians are the most liberal. For, there's some degrees further, but the most liberal of religions. Like we don't have a crazy structure of how we practice our religion, our personal relationship with Jesus. But the more you go deeper into like a Catholic church, there are boundaries, there are regulations. So that looseness is like, we mm -hmm. even, we even take to our Christian practice, this idea of looseness of going and worshiping Jesus, how you want, whether you want to dance, shout or whatever, that, that is more of a, a liberal thought that hasn't always existed in church history. And so there are always forms of looking at society and saying, where do I agree? Where do I disagree? Where do I see that? You know, like, I think, uh, you know, I think that I think that uh, community programs and helping the poor and helping yeah. are important. I think it's majority of the church's job to do it. But as a society, I also think it's important to have programs to help people who are left less fortunate. That's usually a pretty liberal thought because the more conservative thought is, uh, you know, just, you know, to them be damned. They, you know, mm. they, they, if they can't work, they can't eat. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mm -hmm. a very mm -hmm. just pure capitalistic, you know, like you can't make it, you shouldn't eat. And I, and I don't think that that's loving. I don't think that that's gracious. I think it's really the church's responsibility, which for majority of America, it is, it has start salvation army, Christian, you know, Christian started mm. red cross Christian started. Mm. So these things did start from Christians saying, Hey, it's not necessarily the government's responsibility to take care of the widow or orphan. It's our responsibility. But the more the government says, we got this boys, we'll handle it but they're dangling a carrot all the time in front mm. of those individuals. It pushes the church out. It, it doesn't let the church be the church. So nowadays you have people, part of the gospel has been to meet people's felt needs, what their needs are. Mm -hmm. But when you have uh, Uncle Sam and Lady Liberty who offers it every week with contingencies, um, you know, to, you have to stay where you're at in order to keep getting it. Mm. So, you know, like, so that's the problem to where the God has called the church to meet felt needs that has been church's job, but now churches are kind of, it's a lot of churches, and I mean, even our own miss on us sometimes is like, we just fat and lazy because we like, it's like, well, our government's doing it for everyone. What do we got to do? How do we love the poor? How do we got to love the single mother? How do we got to love the widow? How do we love the orphan? Uh, the government's doing it. And there's a lot of laws that the government has passed where we can't even really do it if we've tried, yeah, right. you know? So, right. so cause then people go, well, just do it, go help the poor and widow. Well, you don't realize there is a lot of legality involved yeah. towards the nonprofit on how we do it and how we approach it. And, you know, we're not, you know, how you do a boy's home and girl's home and all these, mm. it's just stringencies. It's made it so that the government is the, is, is, is the milk yeah. in that sense. Wow. Right? Yeah. Recently, some secular people were criticizing the church, uh, uh, based off of the, a current Mr. Beast uh, thing mm -hmm. that he did where he cured blindness or he offered... Gave a thousand people the blind glasses. Uh, the blind glasses and, and cured blindness. And, and these these uh, TikTokers are, like, criticizing the church, like, see, church, why aren't we doing this? You know, we're, all these mega churches spending all this millions on themselves. Why don't they do this? And, but the comments were so great because they were just checking him. He was. They were just like, well, my church does it, but we choose not to blast it on social media. <laughs> I mean, again, yeah, you know, it's like we're still the salt of the earth. We're still the majority of charitable mm. organizations. You know, 70% of all philanthropy you know, comes from Christians. Sending wheelchairs to third world yeah. countries and sending doctor missionaries, you know, to third world <laughs> countries to, to, yeah. to help cure things and stuff. So, you know, it, it's like even if we were to do a skit like or a, 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 a something that Mr. Beast did, oh, Jesus man. tells us not we, to yeah. not to blast it. So it's like we'll lose our reward if we like just blast it on we social media. Look how so great bad. we are. The question I would have like those people who who who, who, who film on social media yeah, where they yeah, give yeah. it oh, to yeah. like, yeah. his thumbnail is what so I would have a thousand people. But here's the question I would have: Did he turn off monetization for that video? Oh. oh. Check. Because if he did, dude. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow. I know where you're going. I think it's like two thousand. I know where you're going. I think exactly. it's like two thousand dollars for those glasses or something like that. So oh. you know, times a thousand people or whatever. But it's like, 2000. bro, it, that video is probably gonna profit. get like fifty million views, right, dude. Right, you, right, right. You're gonna make in the course of the next five years off that video. You're gonna you're gonna make probably what half a million. It mil? was an investment. You know, like bro, yeah. you weren't even like it, it was an investment. And your yeah. and so there is this big theme, like you said, of. Mr. Beast and some others who are who are trying to do um, uh, viral philanthropy, yeah, mm. and 
at the end of the day, they are funding, they are doing it. And, and this is my issue with a lot of, um, is my personal reflections. A lot of these churches that uh, bring up single mothers on, on, on giving days and they hand them a check and then the single mother cries because they gave her $10,000. Like what you don't realize is they're doing that as, as a marketing ploy mm. to get you to give more money. So in mm. their head, they're like, okay, if we give her $10,000, they'll probably give $100,000. Right. As opposed to if we don't bring her up at all and she doesn't cry, we may get $20,000. Mm. They're making calculated decisions. So, and, and I'm not putting hate to anyone, but I, I know that to be true because I've had people come to us and be like, um, why don't we do good where we give a single mother a car on your, on your anniversary offering day? And I'm like, because the churches that you see do that, they do that for a reason to get more money. Yeah. Um, mm. They're not doing it because they, because if they wanted to give a single mother a car, they could have done it without bringing her it. on stage mm. and they could be doing that behind the scenes. But yeah, as Christ yeah. calls us it's to gimmicky. So our church, yeah. we do that stuff all the time. We feed 10,000 people a month. We, we give a, we yeah. have given away over the years, uh, cars and help people with furniture in their apartments. But we've never said, could we film you to, to show the church and tell the church? Yeah. That's just for us an option. We've always right. said, like, mm -hmm. we're not going to basically pimp someone's story out. Now, right. if it's truly part of their testimony and sharing it helps people know just the care of Christ and the yeah. care of the church and the person wants to share it, that's different. But to say, hey, we're going to be doing this calculated thing where it's going to cause people to give more money. That's what Mr. Beast is doing. Oh, yeah. Mr. Beast is saying the yeah. more philanthropy things I do, the more views I get on my channel, the more right. stuff I get on news. And, I, and he's an and, atheist. And, and, so yeah. he's not doing it, you know, out of any like, uh, you know, necessarily commit, any sense Commit of, to give a thousand people cure to bind lists every month. And I'll, that'll impress. Yeah. Do something with mm -hmm. consistency. Yeah. Establish something with consistency. Right. And I'll, I'll truly be impressed yeah, by that. Exactly. But to do one and then do it where it's not popular anymore. So say, here's the one video for it. But for the next 10 years, like our, like our church does, uh, t twice a week, we spend, we, we have a $9 million contract where Costco donates $9 million worth of food to our church every single year. And we give it out free to the community right. who's going through poverty. And we do it every single week. We employ yep. staff to make it happen. We pay rent in a building and utilities. And we do it every single week, 52 weeks a year. Yeah. And, and and we don't blast it. We don't. We Our don't. Our volunteers we, come out. Yeah. They show up. People serve you know, at this thing. Not... People cry because they didn't have food in their refrigerator. Mr. Beast, come holler at your boy. Like, come help us do that week in and week <clears throat> out. And, and yeah. not just one video. And good for him. Do whatever you want it's with better your than money. Nothing. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's better and you, than nothing. And you're inspiring but, other people yeah. to think about philanthropy and you're th you, you know it's inspirational i'm not yeah. gonna lie it, it is but i'm thinking when people use it as a case to criticize god's exactly. church exactly mm -hmm. like exactly. Let, let mr beast fil be philanthropic how he wants let bill gates be as philanthropic but the data shows 70 percent of all philanthropy in the world and specifically in america happens from christians not religious folk yeah. not muslims yep. not jewish people christians in america well then i mean all due respect, leave your criticism at home. Like yeah. until an atheism or some atheist or someone else can match what we do in terms of loving. And we don't even have to do it for show. And even if we did do a video like Mr. Beast, people would be like, oh, you're so full of it. You, right. air, yeah. you, you yeah. recording it. You just going to the hours. Yeah, yeah, we're you know, here. Win. We're yeah, going to feed 5,000 people today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Like we can literally do that. Uh, every, do that every Saturday. Get criticized. Like we, we literally have 500 cars that line up and we give out tons of food and we could do that we could do a mr beast every single saturday and our until church, jesus comes and our church does free counseling like free you get a certain set yeah. of free counseling you get name me one place outside if you oh, don't have yeah. insurance yeah right that, if you have insurance you're paying someone says oh i have insurance and uh, i'm getting counseling for free no friend you have insurance dude, you right. you're gave, paying for insurance you just gave mr beast an idea you got, you dude. Know, like, even <laughs> with, i mean but even but with insurance like, though it I is paid, so yeah hard. yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, you know, you look and our church isn't the only one that does free counseling. So it's like you, you, you look at the, what churches do in society 
And when people form criticisms and you just take the one or two preachers that are misrepresenting, well, that that's like me taking one or two doctors that are misrepresenting right. and saying that's why I refuse when I'm literally bleeding out of my side to go to <laughs> right. a doctor. Don't right? touch me. Like, yeah, don't, okay. you know, because I saw me. I saw <laughs> Fauci in the vaccines. That's why I won't. Go I, to know Kaiser. You know, I know my destiny. I know my feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got I got a tooth falling out, but I won't go to a dentist because yeah. I heard one time a dentist uh, <laughs> you messed know, up put a root canal. Under, like, yeah, you know it, that. The church gets all the flack, which is going to be. It's it's in the word. Christians will always get the flack. You know, yeah. um, the Greeks will call us foolish and dumb, and the Jews we you know. We're not like, complaining. It's just it's just good to point out hypocrisy, it's observation, and yeah. in, and logical inconsistency in people. Yeah, yeah. You know that that that's the all this is. Church is going to be the church yeah. always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. When people you know are so quick to criticize the church, but not the world. When the world is worse if not just as bad or no worse <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you know and they don't you know like if you like oh you know the you know the the abuse um in in the in the catholic church with priests which is horrible i mean and they should you know get the the scorn that they get but it but but people are like that's why i will never go to a church because the sexual immorality in these churches uh, well did you like per capita it's actually worse in school in the education system sexual mm. abuse yeah like wow. there's actually more of a concentration of sexual abuse in public schools more more in virtually every organization is worse than the church but nobody says wow. oh i will never go to put my kids in school oh, i will never go to a doctor i will never you know this that you know so yeah. just that logical inconsistency is interesting to point out yeah. and, and helpful i think to point great out great observations for sure yeah. that's good yeah, we just got. I just, I just think people need to be mindful not to, not to run that gambit where someone goes, "Well, where's the church?" And you go, oh, oh, "Well, I'll find out what my church is doing." And right, I'll, you right. know, like, and it, it's like, no, no, don't let someone pull you into that rap. Where's God at? Where's Christianity at? Like them of themselves. You got to think about critically. Why are they doing it? What's their rap? And just in general, if someone has to elevate what they're doing by tearing something down, chances are whatever that thing is probably ain't as legit as it seems in order. Not like mm -hmm. Mr. Beast did tear down Christians or anything like that. But he, ha I mean, I think he had a Christian background or right. His mom is really religious. His I've heard him is. in an interview. So he has foundations that, um, you yeah. know, at this point. And he is a Christian, gem for sure. He's taking he, Christian he, concepts yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, into uh, into what he's seen and probably learned from his mom, you know. Yeah, thousand um, percent. Okay. Well, that was a good that's it for today. Great conversations, One everybody. <laughs> One up. clip and it just <laughs> opens, good inner Johns. opens up a, a cloud of words. <laughs> Thanks, right. Jeremiah, for being our... Uh, right. Just so you know, everything everyone, everything we pretty much oh, said yeah, today, guys, fact-checked. Fact it was fact-checked today. Um, it was, okay, on Jeremiah on was fact-checking the whole time. Why have been doing this the whole time? Get well, they've been doing it in a corner normally, oh, but nobody's okay. been speaking up. I'm usually sitting in a corner. Yeah. But you just like you said, right? you go. medical You're mayor practice is... Yeah, medical mayor practice is the third most... number three, 250,000... Number three? Number three. Yeah. There you go. You're number one. Boom. Shit. You're right Boom. about it. Got it.